deflected ball. Intercepted by the Cougars. It's a takeaway. And Epps breaking tackles and in. BYU touchdown. Catch made inside the 10 yard line. Middle to Mitchell. Driven back. Didn't get it. Welcome back to BYU Sports Station. We are live in Studio B with your day-to-day -day BYU Sports play-by-play. -play. I'm Spencer Linton alongside Jerem Jordan. Joining us now is a guy who knows a thing or two about a big win over the arch rival Bilo. Utah. Yes, which Brian. takes Brian. us to our question of the day. Brian, let's start right it's there. The Riley. That's the Riley chant. <laughs> Riley, Riley. <laughs> Brian, what's your favorite BYU win over Utah all time? 2009 has to be you played in, in it. your biased opinion yeah um, that was a good one though it was a great one you know um we talk about ending the game on the last play right and that's what happened 2009 um going into overtime that was my first experience ever in the rivalry um everybody was was talking about um just their experience before like you know trying to prepare me and i was like well, whatever you know I just came, came to BYU and was involved in the program, you know, maybe four or five months, you know, prior. So to me, it wasn't a big deal. All I knew was I just couldn't wear red. And I remember driving on the bus to the stadium and I look over, we, we we're at, at a stop sign. I look over to the left and just, you know, Utah fans tailgating. And, you know, somebody gave me a, a hand gesture. They said you were the number one guy? Yeah, yep, yep. <laughs> and that's when, for some, I don't know what it was, like, it just took over my spirit. I was like, oh, I'm in this. This, this is real. Like, I'm, I'm ready to go. I got mad and pissed off like everybody else did. Full and disclosure, <laughs> we do this to you before every game day as well. Just to get you going. <laughs> just to get you going. That's right. That's right. We do not do that. <laughs> Spencer doesn't do Don't that. Don't speak to David Nixon and Blaine and David. Fair. That's fair. So yeah. So, I do not do oh, that. <laughs> oh nine was and, and then um, you know when when I was I was stuck on the field because you know the crowd rushed and um, I always remember a fan that that you know grabbed my hand and picked me up and and crowd surfed me all the way to, to the locker room because I was I was stuck. Um, and so that that entire experience, man, um, being lifted, you know, at the at the other twenty, all the way to the end zone. You went that far. I went that far, and and, <laughs> and I, I in the middle what? of it, I left my helmet. So I was like, oh wait, my helmet, <laughs> take me back, take me back. And they're like, no, we'll get it. Equipment staff will grab it. So so I'm sitting there waiting for a little bit, right? And they're like going, like pushing me up and down. And there's pictures of this, right? There's not videos, but there's pictures. <laughs> While I'm waiting for my helmet, then I see my helmet count. <laughs> I grab my helmet, and I go in the locker room and, and celebrate. So. <laughs> That whole experience, man, was um, was was amazing. There's video. It's just an SD from the mountain. Yeah, you, yeah. you're right. Yeah, no 4K. Yeah, we can't really <laughs> decipher who what was going on. You can see some random, you know, dot. It's very there. pixelated. It's dot. hard. Being slowly it's like moved a versus across the field. Stamp on you know, top you know it's it me because I'm, yeah. I'm this big. So yeah, you know. it's <laughs> you were a cleat. We couldn't tell. Okay, uh, we the the best win bracket today is uh, is a good one because we've got 2001 versus Utah, which was, was special as well. And then 21. Yeah. The recency bias may win the day, which is fine. That, that should play into it too. That 21 game was so special. Like the Big 12 invite the day before, ending the streak. Mm -hmm. And it sort of just ushered in like, we're not playing you for the next two years too right. kind of deal. Yeah. That win is one of the best in BYU history, which is why it's seated in this bracket. Um, what do you remember from that day and that that night of, of beating Utah and ending the streak? It was, it was surreal, you know? Um, I hate to make it sound like that, like it was like a, this, a big deal. I mean, obviously it was, but man, it was almost like we've, we've arrived. It was almost like, hey, we've, we've had so long of just trying to get over this hump, right? Um, and, and trying to compete with somebody that's at a, at a, at a power five level. And, so, and, a, and, a, and a, I mean, that's a good program. Right? I like As, that phrasing that you use. We've arrived because right. there's multiple levels to that mm -hmm. based on we've arrived. We've been validated as a, a power five team. Right. We've been invited. We've accepted. And then yeah. you take on the power team in the Pac-12 at yeah. the moment, right? Exactly. As absolutely. And, um, you know, a good way to, 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 to measure yourself is against a quality opponent in, in good competition. And, I don't like them at all. They're a good program, though. I'm not going to sit here and lie. We all know that they're a good program. We got to give them props. So, you know, to 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 beat a, a good program like that, um, and and a program that you don't like as well, right? And and for so long, I was on the last team that beat Utah. So you ended the streak, and then you started the streak in that's 2010. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's right. So you know, it 
it was bittersweet for me personally um, and just being a little selfish. Whenever I was out in the community and people would, you know, talk mess like, oh, you guys haven't beat Utah in X amount of years. I'm like, Psh, I was I was on the last team that beat Utah. And then everybody would stop. So and now I can't say that anymore. That's the so. 72 <laughs> Dolphins of BYU. I football. played on the team that last beat Utah. And then, Would you like to continue this like, conversation? I didn't, I didn't yes. lose in 2016 uh, or whatever. Yeah, that's fine. Exactly. Brian, I, I might be crazy, you know. And yes. I, when I was talking about the trap game scenario, yeah. I, I just don't know if BYU, because they're new to the Power Five, that they, I certainly can't get there where I'm like, I can overlook a Power Five opponent. BYU's going to play 10 Power Fives. I, how do you overlook a, a conference Power Five opponent? Right. Um, Jerem's logic is sound in that like, big games were like... Because they might Texas, be 2-7 no, and seven at the time, the opponent might be. But for me, you know. the, the trap game on the schedule is the first game that BYU plays because they're supposed to win and supposed to win handily. But there are so many moving parts, 20 new pieces out of the transfer portal. You have a brand new defensive coaching staff. How does it all gel together? BYU, again, as a 24-point favorite, they're, they're supposed to just come in here and handle Sam Houston. Sam Houston's a team that was the FCS national champion in 2020. They got nothing to lose, Brian. Mm. But maybe I'm cra am I crazy to pinpoint the first game against a team you should dominate as a trap game? Um, you know, when I, when I got this, this question this morning, I chuckled. I was like, <laughs> I, there's no, I don't see a trap game at all. Um, you know, there's no trap games on the schedule. Nope, that's why I chuckled. <laughs> Because 2009 Brian I, thinks there's no trap game. I, I, I think, <laughs> you know, it's funny. not a single one. You know, it's funny in 2009. I thought the trap game was Florida State, you know, and it ended up being Florida State. <laughs> to the tune of a 26 point loss. Yeah. Well, you know, we were I thought we didn't talk about we Florida going, State. We, you know, um, you didn't want to I've talk forgiven about myself. Florida. Oh, for, we're, we're <laughs> talking now. Yeah, yeah, we can talk about it now. Gotcha. I, I okay, forgave, okay. I, I forgave myself like three weeks ago. So, um, that yeah, recently. We're, we're good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's a little new for me. That's, but, good. Um, That's good. But, um, you know, I, I think I think just the, the, the scenario of BYU going into the Big 12, man, it's it's like every game is, is, is big. It's a Super Bowl. Yeah, yeah. That's that's the, that's the feeling. That's the vibe I get. Um, maybe if it was year three, year that's four. That's what I'm saying. I, might t I feel like maybe. it's going to take a few years. Yeah, yeah. But, again, I don't disagree entirely with Jerem. Like, Texas and Oklahoma are huge names, and you face Texas Tech and Iowa State before those two respective opponents. So perhaps that could factor in at what, some point middle of the season. What if BYU is 6-3 and three going into the Iowa State game in Game 10, and Iowa State is 2-7? Uh, then it becomes then, a trap yeah, game. Yeah. Then it may feel like, oh, we should win this game yeah. and Oklahoma's next week. Yeah, situa so we, situational. Yeah. Right now, everyone's even. Like, who knows? Blah, blah, blah. What if certain BYU's teams only favored stink. in four games right now, and two of them are the first two, right? Yes, yeah. and BYU will benefit from being the underdog and become a trap game for opponents this year quite a bit, I think. Yeah, I yeah, think yeah. certain opponents will overlook BYU should they struggle at times. Sure. Yeah. I think BYU jumps out quick this year, goes 4-1 and one or 3-2 and two in the first five, and then the back six are going to be a challenge. Give us some insight into what you think this is going to be like for BYU to play 10 power fives in a row. And that in that like fifth and sixth game, when we're like late October, early November, and BYU's beat up, yeah. how do they stay in it to get enough wins to make a bowl game? Stay healthy. I mean, it's, it's, How much it's, of that is luck? 5%. <laughs> <laughs> you can control whether you get injured or not? 95%? Yeah, you think, think it's so. that low yeah. of staying healthy? Like, it's not, not a ton of luck involved. I think, I think understanding um, angles, understanding how to get hit and take hits um, plays a, a huge factor into it. So maybe 10%. Um, it's at, doubled already. At this at this level, <laughs> you should know. You should know, like. Here's a good example. As a corner, if I see two, if I see two pulling guards and a, a pulling guard and a pulling tackle, you pull a hamstring suddenly. And, oh no, I get blocked. No, <laughs> no. Um, and and the running back is right behind both of those linemen. Well, w when I come in, I'm gonna try to 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 dive through the 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 lineman's outside leg to hit the the running back right. I'm not going to try to square up with anybody. If I try to square up and, and take on the, the running back, I'm going to get all the additional weight with me, right? So I'm going to have two, three guys that I'm trying to tackle, essentially. And that, that's, just, that's not a good formula, you know, trying to tackle so 600 avo pounds. Avoidable. So, so that's what I'm saying. That that's, okay. that's avoidable. Understanding those type of scenarios, putting your, in your body in, in positions and situations where you can come out, um, you know, not injured and healthy. 
The other, the other 90% is going to be the strength and conditioning program. And, and we've know, we know what the, the, the changes that have been made this offseason. Colby Clawson's running the show now. Look, I, look, I play with I play He's with your Colby. your guy. I, I play with him. I, I love him dearly. Um, maybe five, six years ago, I was talking to him about, um, you know, some of the, the, the new research that he was already doing. Um, and I, it got me excited. This is before we even thought he would be here. So I, I, I feel comfortable and confident with, 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 with Colby. Um, and just the direction of the of the, of the program, c compared to when I was there, um, you know, I probably wouldn't be as hopeful. Mm. Brian Logan is with us on BYU Sports Nation. Let's finish with this because you are a defensive-minded guy. You're a defensive guy, Brian. I'm my <laughs> offensive guy. <laughs> I, I just, I just, I, they just, I just play defense. <laughs> and, and I expected to take a few games for BYU's defense to really come together and, and find what they are, but. How much better do you expect BYU's defense to be overall compared to last year? And this is a team that was ranked 109th in total defense last year. Frankly, they were not good in a, in a lot of ways. So how much better in one season with, with all of the coaching changes and a revamped schedule, much tougher schedule, do you expect the defense to be? Top 50. You think they're going to be a top 50 defense? I'd take gonna... it right now. Yeah. I'd take it right now. Would you take top 70? I would. Yeah. You wouldn't take it. I don't, I don't want. I don't want top seventy. I want top fifty. And, and that's included with hey, BYU's in the Big Twelve. Some dynamic offenses there. Yeah, so. yeah. You know, going to practice um, in spring ball, the energy and the vibe is different, man. It, it it feels like when I play. You know, everybody has a sense of urgency. Um, they're competing. They're, they're competitive. The first time in a while, I've seen the defense be competitive. Um, and is that because of the scheme change? Is it because it, of the coaching? Is it think, all of it? I think I think it's I think it's 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 fifty fifty, right? Guys have an opportunity to go out and and, and shine and, and this is first impression, right? So if I'm a second string guy and I think that should have been first, there's no politics now because this is a all new staff. So here's my opportunity. So obviously they're gonna try harder, they're gonna give their 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 best, but I think this this defense brings an identity. I think it's it's simplified and I think it matches mm. the the talent and the characteristics of 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 uh, the players on this roster, um, you know me. I'm a I'm a I'm a I'm a cloud cover two corner. My butt's to the sideline. I need I need seven yards off and just let me go. Right, give me some help over the top and let me freestyle. Do not put me up on the line of scrimmage, face to face with somebody. I will get in playing man. I will get beat. Don't don't do that. Right, and I think the last couple of years the defense was kind of like. Uh, the, the, the latter example that I gave, um, defenses that don't really fit the characteristics and um, the skill sets of the, the players on the roster, I think that's different now. Okay. Brian Logan, bringing it on BYU Sports Nation. You're number one. Don't forget that, okay? Thank you. And you like this new defense because you're hearing they're going to have five defensive backs on the field most of the that's time. That's exactly right. Nickel! <laughs> and I can see through a little, this. A little, little nickel mania for BYU. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Let's go. Hey, great to have you with us, Brian. Thanks, Brian. Thanks, Way to get the wardrobe uh, synced oh, up yeah, as yeah. well. Yeah, nice job. We didn't, we didn't even plan this either. We didn't even plan it. No, literally didn't talk about it. I need that, that shirt, though. Cougar Club. It's a nice one. We'll tell you after. We'll tell you after.